with Blake of the Super Spears Brothers here with another thing you will hate. Today we're going to be reviewing Mohawk and Headphone Jack. That's not two titles, it is the title of a inscrutable game for the Super Nintendo. Now I've been doing uh, gameplay, you can watch the gameplay videos, but what I wanted to do is break this game down a little bit. In fact, I wanted to break it down into tiny little pieces because it's horrible. I'm going to throw up. I, I am gonna throw up. In Mohawk and Headphone Jack, you're playing as some sort of yellow creature, presumably named Mohawk or Headphone Jack, I didn't really bother to read further, who can turn into a spiky koosh ball or who can jump. The screen flips around a whole lot and that's just about it. That's the game. That's it. In this game, you're trying to collect all these CDs, and then once you find the CDs, it opens up the door to the next level, and once you get through that door, you go on to the next stage, and then you have to find all the CDs in that level, and so on and so forth, until you get to the end boss. It's kind of fun for the first two seconds, and then it gets awful. This is one of the most confusing and truly inscrutable games for the Super Nintendo. It uses so much Mode 7, this game feels like the 90s threw up in your Super NES. It is a cart that really defies explanation except for, hey, 90s kids love this stuff. This is gonna test well with demographics. It's got the word Mohawk and headphone jack in it, which are two things kids love. Their CD player with their headphone jack and of course Mohawks, which were popular 10 years earlier. This game, you play some kind of cool 90s character in that style of animation that was popular around 1996 or so with a uh, sprite animation that kind of got over animated. It's pretty, it's actually kind of cool to see all the different moves and different styles and movements you have. It's very fluid, but it also kind of gets over animated to the point of some of the movements don't really make sense and the wobbliness is really just there to be wacky. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing too. Having played through this game a little bit, I can say that it's not easy. And I don't mean that, that everything kills you, because it does. Once you've even mastered the stage, it's really hard to figure out where you're even supposed to go. There's really very few in-game clues, and I'm not talking about tutorials with large amounts of text, I'm talking about nice directional arrows or a sense of progression that gives you a clear sense of where you're supposed to go and where the next objective is. That is game design that is fundamentally flawed. It's game design that really shouldn't be explained and yet has to be. So look, we figured out that Mode 7 exists and the whole thing rotates. Yeah, let's just make the whole game like that. I think I can usually get through a video game without motion sickness. Doesn't matter how much jumping, spinning, twirling, and pilot wingsing through 3D space there is. I usually am fine. I felt queasy almost right away. This game felt horrible to play, and I stopped it not just because I didn't know where to go next, but because it was unpleasant to experience. Where does that leave us? Well, you know what? It's got some nice animations. It's got some interesting gameplay, even though it's a little misguided. And the whole idea of the whole world spinning around would be a good idea if they had any sense of how to execute it. But there's virtually no level design. When in the first level, you're just playing with gray and green and yellow. There's almost nothing that pops. As you go through the game, it doesn't get any better. Now, I didn't get past the first level. So I watched through a few playthroughs to see if I was something I was missing. I wasn't. Here's a little bit of a, an example of gameplay from a little later in the game, just to give you a sense of what else happens in this amazing title. This looks absolutely no different from the first level, apart from the fact that it's pink. Now imagine, sometime in the mid-90s, people paid 60 to $70 for this piece of shit. Which means that they spent the today's equivalent of approximately $90 in today's money? That's more than I spend on blow at a weekend. But the thing that bothers me about this game is that virtually no thought has gone into the design. I mean, 
The graphics have some design to them, but generally the enemies are just 3D objects that really don't look like anything. The level design is higgledy-piggledy, it really doesn't tell you very much. The power-up's not that interesting. And generally speaking, they've got this 3D rotation thing that's going on all the time, but there's no rhyme or reason for it in the game, in the plot of the game, or in the levels themselves. The levels don't become more interesting as a result of this mechanic. That's bad. That, in my mind, is a cardinal sin of game design. With one good idea, no other good ideas, and really not doing anything to make it work. Now, probably they've rushed, you can't really blame the game designers for that. Uh, for many other reasons, maybe the game was restarted many times, maybe they ran out of money. But the truth is, there's just not much to this game. There's many people with better ideas in the 90s, and even today, that can make a better game than this, with virtually no budget. And this game probably cost, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop. So. While the game's not completely horrible, while there's bits of it that are playable, it's not a great game. Now, I'm going to try and give up my honest impressions. I haven't done a lot of exaggerating. I'm not one of those hyperbole guys that goes, This is such shit, it's like a big shit sandwich inside a storm of shit on a ship in the Titanic where shit is raining down from it and you gotta batten down the hatches and then it explodes and people are on a raft trying to get towards safety in the, in a, on a shit uh, ship over the shit ocean and they land survival on a shit island and, shit and then they one have day to live off shit. It turns out that the rest of the world's been destroyed in a gigantic shit disaster. That's how bad this game is. No, I'm not one of those hyperbole guys. So I'm gonna lay it out pretty straight. From my put gameplay, feeling absolutely sick of the game, in an honest 10 point scale, I can give this a maximum of four points. And really, that's being excessively generous. This game is bargain bin garbage. Not figuratively. It is literally bargain bin garbage. You can find it in a bargain store for three bucks. Save yourself three bucks. Next time I see it, say, hey, Blake, I was hoping that maybe you could spin me around in an airplane ride for a while till I get dizzy and throw up. I'll do that for two bucks. That's my present to you. Hope you've enjoyed this thing.